What's up guys, Dr. Dan back here with a wonderful woman. Her name is Betsy. And Betsy is a new-ish patient here at the office, right? You were here two years ago. Right, here I am. And stopped for a year, got busy with life, and what happened? Just fell out of it a little bit? <laughs> I, I had surgery and then I thought I was totally cured and the surgery wasn't complete. <laughs> what was this? What was surgery this? was for carpal tunnel. One hand, both hands? Both hands. Can we see? No. So, uh, oh yeah, right there, little one, super little. Yeah, and see the scar there. Yeah, let's open hands up. Let's see something here. So one, we see this tendon right here is like pronounced and we see three-ish kind of just vascular areas, right? If you look, this can you- This was done a year earlier. Okay, can you see this turkey foot right here in your hand? How this white line's here, 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 yes. here, right? We know she has, blood flow, nerve flow issues. She's had, what were your symptoms with carpal tunnel? Uh, tingling of the first three fingers, thumb, index, and middle, and uh, numbness on this hand, mostly just tingling on this hand. So it started with- This hand. Carpal tunnel surgery? Yes, about a year and a half ago, and this arm was, and hand was fine initially. Seven months later, this hand started with the same stuff. And we started with a little bit of chiropractic care, then you got surgery and then right. symptoms went away? Symptoms went away, um, but I was still stiff, but finding out in the last couple of months that my shoulders are stiff sleeping, and uh, although my fingers are fine, my wrist and shoulders are hurting. Tight. Yeah. Go back to center. Scooch forward a little bit, forward a little bit there, perfect. And a little more forward. So now you came back in just last week and what, how did you feel after the first appointment? After the first appointment, after being adjusted, I had a really good night's sleep. I was not stiff and uh, my shoulder and upper arm felt a lot better. And I've been doing my homework and doing my stretching. Beautiful, yeah, <laughs> beautiful. So we noticed, that, how does this feel? Okay. Okay, and how does this feel? A little bit stiffer. A little stiffer, right? So the right hand was second, the left hand was first. Right. I don't care about that. What I do care about is where the problem's at and trying to attack the problem and make sure that we learn how to heal the problem with the right things, which is movement, which is exercise, which is posture. And so how does this feel here? Fine. How does this feel here? A little tender. Tender. So we already know her brachial plexus, her cervical brachial group of nerves that runs from the neck. You have these nerves up in the neck that kind of like wiggle together and they form these thicker nerves down through the arm and the shoulder, and they ultimately go down to three nerves in the hand, and that's where we get like our different neuropathy, our numbness, our tingling, our pins and needles, our circulatory issues, which all lead to advanced cartilage degeneration breakdown, calcium deposition within the knuckles, so nodes or stiff, you know, your fingers get stiffer. Some people have uh, different nodules around the, around the joints that don't ever release because they turn into arthritis, which arthritis is like a term that means no blood flow, no nerve flow, no flexibility. Only body choice is to get stiffer and tighter. Betsy is an amazing woman who I would say is a little more go with the flow-ish, somewhat carefree, but still type A, works incredibly hard. What, what would you say there? Uh, I would say a uh, B plus. A B plus, <laughs> A minus. She stays extremely busy throughout the day, researches, reads, types, manages lots of people, a kind lot, of ish. Right? A lot of sedentary and not as much movement. Not as because much Because I'm reading more than doing. So we want to think about our reading posture. How, how do we read? Uh, usually on a couch with my laptop in front of me. And you're leaning back into the yes. couch. So if your laptop's on your lap, yes. is that how you would say it is? Yes. And your feet are down on the ground or up on the ottoman? Up. Up on the ottoman? Yeah, usually. Beautiful. Because we're going to teach you the most optimal reading position that you're ever going to do. Okay? And we're going to talk about it sitting on the table. But what we are going to do is we're going to pretend that we have a laptop here. Okay. And we're going to lean back into the couch. And it's okay to lean on the couch, but what I want you to do is start to either A, put a little pillow behind your back, but definitely start to think about this. So if you're reading and you pause on an article and you want to read for a little bit, you're reading, but I also want you to think squeeze the right shoulder down. 
And just try, and now back, because that's forward, yeah. correct. And I want you to find those muscles right there. And then I want you to think about the left shoulder back and down. And you're gonna notice this side in the brain, you're trying to connect the down here is gonna be lightly easier. It'll feel a little less inflamed, it'll feel a little less tight. And then you're gonna kind of come back to the right side. And then we have to put the computer down on the ottoman for a little bit, put our legs flat on the floor. You're gonna take a nice stretch break. Hands are gonna be tight to the hips. Maybe the um, computer's right in front of you. You're gonna breathe in, breathe out, drive forward, but lift upward. And now you're gonna start reading a little bit here. And you're gonna do the same thing where you coil or cut left. And we're gonna coil or cut right, and you're gonna definitely read right here and notice how that's tougher for you to drive into this right side versus drive into the left side's a little bit even easier. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to center. Let's think palms down and back behind us. Fingers down and in. Tall sit, correct. In the back side, do you wanna come around to your briefs so we can see? So we look, to, we look at balance between the scapula. Do you feel balance in the scapula? Do you feel? Um, nothing really, uh, right? Yeah, nothing really. So we notice this feels like this, this feels like this. Right side's a little worse. Shoulders open. And then when we, when we say pack the shoulders, you guys can see how this wing is a little less than this wing is. Can you see that on camera-ish? Okay. Twist back a little more. Now let's focus on left hand, left shoulder. And do you feel in your brain that you're activating down here lightly? Okay. Squeeze right into there, nice. And now let's do the right side. And this side is winged and we gotta think, really pull the shoulder back. Oh, don't turn the head. Push the hand down the right, push into the table, roll this back. Oh. But what's this side feel like? It's okay. A little better, right? Yeah. A little worse. Yeah, a lot worse. A lot worse. <laughs> a little better. Yes. A little worse. <laughs> they're not, uh, they're, they're, the left side's better than the right side. So we're gonna see that she's got right side neck tension. Uh, she knows that this right trap is more tender. We know that these muscles are weaker down here. Are your hands okay or are they dying right now? Uh, the right is kind the of right dying. Is, so it's dying because it's not nerve flow. It's compression up in the uh, pec region, up in the TOS, thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, her next, if she goes ortho route, carpal tunnel surgery, next is elbow surgery, third is neck arm surgery. Oh, it's like years long and all you have to do is sit here and stretch your stuff out and activate your back and breathe in through your nose and exhale and think about that beautiful tall posture. Coming back here one more time, Brie. Now she's not aware yet. We're gonna make her aware of how nice and long this left elbow is, but look at this right side. And it's bent and it's tricep weak. So if I say straighten your left elbow up, see how powerful that feels? Can you straighten your right? Oh, <laughs> soft is smooth, smooth is strong. Oh, now we're gonna tap into it a little bit, tap into it a little deeper. See the twitch, see the twitch, feel the twitch. Do you feel the twitch? Yeah, I feel the twitch. So right now, what are we doing? In our brain, we got this thing, it's called the motor cortex. It's an amazing piece of brain tissue. And she herself is talking to herself and she's focused right here on this beautiful muscle called the tricep, which offsets the pec, the neck, helps us build a flatter scapula, also helps open up the channels for blood and nerve flow and health to get back to the fingers because Never a chiropractic patient before? Uh, never. Never. <laughs> so we're just getting back to starting. She knows she cuts well left. She knows she doesn't cut no. anywhere near as well right. And shoulder lifts. Shoulder lifts. <laughs> yeah. And maybe we sleep on this right arm and it's all rolled forward all the time most of the night. Or maybe we, you know, work on the computer all day and we're always kind of like slumped forward with and, the And mouse I'm right-handed. And, yeah. and I'm right-handed and yada, 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 right? We all have these problems that we, they're not problems, they're just lifestyle um, ergonomics, body postures, but we definitely notice the left elbow feels like it as feels versus the right elbow needs more work. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Now this is where things get cool because on our first appointment back, we already pointed out, let's take a rest and just shake that out a little bit. <laughs> take the left rest and shake that out. All right, let's work the back for a second with a little hyperbole. So we want to do that exercise, maybe, uh, I don't know, that was five-ish minutes. 
and that was enough, right? You you yeah. feel like, oh gosh, like my arm is gonna die. I'm done. And I'm done. So that's cool. Get up and go about your day and do whatever, and then you know sit back and do a little bit more on the couch. But definitely, let's reset here. Definitely, you're going to start bending forward, lifting upward. Uh, but dropping shoulders down, yes, correct. Now left shoulder cuts back, then right shoulder cuts back. So you're going to be reading your articles on your computer. And you're going to think, breathe in through my nose, your nose. Exhale, push hands down, squeeze shoulder blades back, and hold that and read as long as you can, and gently focus on left side. And in your brain, think, can I push my left hand down? Can I pull my left shoulder down and back and back now, right there? And now stay head focused on the computer. Notice how that's a forward shoulder, pull it backwards. Press the right hand down, but pull the shoulder way more backward. Oh, and own that right there. Does that make sense? See how this is tougher to find than this side is easier to find. All right. So down and back. Down, down with the hand, back with the shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out, push the hand down, drive down into it. Squeeze back into here. Nice, 10, 9, 8, 7, lower through the elbow. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And left side. Okay. Cool. Back to center. Just sit up a little taller and keep your hands pushed right there. So, carpal tunnel, super common complaint. Uh, I don't know the current statistics, but years ago, it's like, oh, 70% of the population has carpal tunnel, or something ridiculously high, where you have, if you watch the super old school videos, and if you've been doing the super old school exercises, the complete flexor stretch is your hand up on wall. That's your never have carpal tunnel, elbow pain, golfer's elbow, neck pain. Got to do it every day. I've been doing it every day for like 10 years. And we got to remind people, hey, you have your big three, big three that we did a long time ago. Those big three, they really haven't changed. Check out the video on YouTube, Dr. Dan's big three exercises. Palms up, elbows in, shoulders back and down. You got your complete flexor stretch. And then you got your hip hinge, your back decompression stretch. Those are three things that we want to ingrain into your brain so that you do them every day, just like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth twice a day? At least. At least, because <laughs> it just doesn't feel good, right? Right, right. And man, sometimes I get home at like two, three, four o'clock, I right. go up south. I was like, where are you going? I'm going to brush my teeth. She brushes her teeth like four times a day. She carries the toothbrush around. She loves clean mouth. <laughs> you gotta like clean mouth, you gotta love clean body too, because clean body feels really good. And then we never get that diagnosis, carpal tunnel. And if we do get the diagnosis, carpal tunnel, yeah. Yeah. you gotta still do the exercises and then you get rid of it and you never have to talk about it ever again. Right. Because guess what happens to people, which is not ever happening to you because she's a powerhouse. Yeah. I have carpal tunnel. I can't pick things up anymore. My neck hurts, my back hurts, I feel stiff. I can't do, I can't grip this. You know people can't even cut vegetables anymore because their carpal tunnel is so bad. Well, it's nuts because the carpal tunnel surgery is not a big deal, but you, as you said, the scar tissue afterwards can become a big deal again. True. So you're transferring numb fingers to stiff wrists. Stiff wrists, carpal tunnel, again. In a different version. And we can't. And we can't. Yeah. yeah. Grip strength is a predictor yeah. of, of your life, actually. Right. How strong I, your grip is. I've noticed that. And Part the stronger your grip is, mm -hmm. the stronger your core is, and the more energized right. your whole nervous system is. Right. What did you notice? Um, I, you know, I have a, uh, my grip yeah. is not as strong, right. so yeah. I use a little you know, I use a combination yeah. if I'm opening up jars and things like that. Yeah. So. My husband is one of my accommodations. <laughs> ah, he's getting stronger though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. He comes in here with pep in his step now. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Look straight forward. Now, here's the cool thing, is that we're going to go knuckles down and fingers wide open. All right. Now, this is the super cool thing from the back if you want to see Brie. Because we got kinetic chain dysfunction. That's what it's called. It's called left elbow looks like this, right elbow looks like that. Right, left or uh, sorry, left elbow looks like this. Left wrist looks like this. She's nervous, tight, painful in this whole right arm on the extensor compartment, which actually comes up into the back of the tricep. So we have uh, a little bit of what we say muscle atrophy, little muscle weakness here. She's going to work on this at home, gradually thinking, yes, correct. 
gradually thinking, can I just let this bend a little more? So let's pay attention to this. We're going to work on it and see how much improvement yeah. we get. We're definitely going to get, move it back you can, <clears throat> you can move both back and you can tall sit out of your spine and you can just sit on the couch. Yes, correct. Find your back chain okay. coil, find your, this back chain coil, which is, would, would you say less active? Yes. Less active, more yeah. active, yes. less active. Let's go gently if we can back here. All right. Tall sit. Nice. Have to own the tall sit. Have to maintain your posture because what does posture do? It stretches you out and it stretches. Opens, opens, opens and she, everything. And you, she has a presence. It's a tall presence and it's confidence. And it's as we lift up through the head and the neck, we avoid right. neck compression, yeah. degeneration, yada, yada, yada. We get out of that forward rounded position, which is okay to do when you read and type a little bit, but definitely wow. read and type right here. And yeah. you know, if your computer's in, uh, on the table or whatever, and cut left and cut right and slowly start. Oh, there you go. All right, take a rest. Oh. Is that cool? Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> now that's gotta be done for, in your case, I would recommend by the end of the day, you have a little timer in your head. Did I do that? What was that exercise where I put my palms down and back behind me? Right. And what's that other exercise where I put my knuckles down and I stretch the tops of my wrists out, which is different than the bottoms of the wrist. And ultimately that right side is going to help you free up all of this. What does that feel like in there? Tight. Tight. And naughty. 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 That's the word. It's bad. <laughs> Oof, it's not. Get out of me. <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> Little cheat cards that you send home with all these exercises. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we have a bunch of videos on YouTube. I know. Got to check them out. It's a couple oh. of them, right? There's another guy on there that has, uh, oh man, you should watch his wrist video. It was amazing, <laughs> actually. So, and same stuff. It's all the same stuff. You got a little dysfunction in one joint which turns into more dysfunction in another joint, which turns into more dysfunction up in your neck. And then down the road, you have carpal tunnel, plus you got headaches, plus you got neck pain, plus the doctor says, you need to get an MRI of your neck, which you did have. Right. Plus you have disc degeneration and yada yada, which we, <laughs> we can feel because those things are all part of life. Right. Okay, so acknowledge that, hey, that's just what it is and this is who I am today. So what can I do to feel a little bit better? And then you go back to the timer in your head and you say 20 minutes a day, definitely 30 minutes a day is better. And if you've got all kinds of time at home with, you know, reading and this and that, like there's no limit. You can go 60 minutes, six, 10 minute sessions. So if you're laying or sitting back on a couch, your shoulders are down and back, back. Down back and down, down and back. Okay. One of the two, just a little bit, right? It's not okay. like I sit there and do it constantly, but just as we talk about it, right? It's like, oh, she just reminded me I needed to be a little more back chain. Back chain means set the shoulder down, wiggle through it a little bit. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Nice. All right. Let's go face down on the table for me. <laughs> Stretch right side. In addition to the fingers, we have the toes, and we have the knee, and we have the ankle, and the wrist of the ankle is down here, and the toes and the fingers of the foot are down here, aka the toes. So long term, as we work together again and start to get you back in the system, what we want to see in a month or two month or three month time frame is that you start to get a little more flexibility in your knees. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just rest your face down. And Push into my hand here with your right foot, and now relax, and push, and relax, and push. Now you've fallen down on that ankle, so that ankle's a little stiff. And this side up. And push, and relax, and push, and relax. And you can see how we can get a little further on the left side. How much pain here? Push and relax. Yeah. And push and relax. And push 
and relax. See how much further just after a little bit? All right, now relax legs, feet, arms down on the hand rests right here, like this, right? Flat on the perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah. Smooth inhale through nose. Exhale quietly, deeply down, whole way down. One, two, three. Feel all that? Breath in, exhale out. Shoulders relax. Nice work today. Breath in and exhale down. One, two. One more breath in, but and exhale down. All right, so we got three out of four. First appointment back last week, we got Nada. Maybe one or two little ones. She's not allowed to adjust her, but we got lots of stuff to move in there today. And now we're gonna do right side up over to the window, up like bends. Roll on your left hip for me. I suit. Hands cross, look up to ceiling for me. Like this, like this. Shoulders open and head up towards sky. There you go. Easy breath in, exhale, roll out, whole way out. Two, three, four, other side for me. And we'll get our load back on future appointments to listen up as we go through some leg exercises. But today, we want to put the palms down and back. We're going to do a little wrist work. And we're going to cross this way. And I'm going to be a little rough with the pull. Inhale deep. Exhale deep. Whole way open. Relax your shoulders. All right, flat in your back. So just getting a little movement in the lumbar spine. You can feel this side. Yes. You can feel this side. Mm -hmm. This side is easier. Easier. Right side's easier. tighter. Mm -hmm. We're going easy. Relax. She hates this. <laughs> <laughs> some people love it. Some people say, "Get off my foot." <laughs> I don't do pedicures either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Got to take care of the feet, though. Relax, toe on the right. Easy, nice, easy, nice, easy, nice, easy, nice. All right, the right foot actually just pretty decent. Twist knees open gently. Nice. Relax. Now. In bed at night, you got to do your foot exercise. You guys see in every video, your foot points, your foot squeezes. She's got great, great, great plantar flexion, but you notice left side is a little easier than right side. So if I say squeeze and curl your toes down on the right foot, you're going to notice that's going to cramp in there a little bit. If I say squeeze and curl on the left foot, it's also may cramp. When you lay in bed at night, Betsy, we got to go right here. I'm going to let go. Okay. And you're going to squeeze gently your left foot. You're going to squeeze and wiggle gently your right foot down. You're going to keep these still down though. You're going to shift your focus from right foot to left foot. And she's got beautiful arches. Not a lot of low back pain, right? A right. little bit of tension, a little bit of stiffness. Right. But nothing that's bad. She's bilateral, right? She's gr pretty good bilaterally. She's got strong legs. If she maintains strong legs, She's going to have nice life with ability to bend and twist and move and walk and do all her stuff exercise wise that we got to do. Plus left foot squeeze, right foot squeeze. We're going to get blood back into the feet by doing the feet squeezes. And then up in the hands, we're going to put the hands on the thighs, push into your thighs, hold and roll. Correct. And then you check left hand, left shoulder with right hand, right shoulder, and you'll notice that the right side, maybe the right side. Yeah. Okay. Feel left side good? Mm -hmm. Feel right side is maybe a little tougher, but not much? Right. Just a little bit. So you do left side 10, 20 seconds, right side 10, 20 seconds. Okie doke. Now we're going to use, can you pull your sleeves up for me? Nice, and we're gonna pull this way up. Can you get a lot of blood flow last time? Up yeah. at the wrist. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna work on the fingers also. Probably, oh. 
So we have this stuff called tenosynovitis. It's like inflammation of the connective tissue or the fascia. You can hear Clicking. a little of the gristle. Sometimes we'll just tuck this in a little bit so that we make sure. Whoops, we got a little bit right there too. That's all right. Yeah. Let's watch it. Part of the game. Part of the game. You come in here, you might get some stuff on you. <laughs> now she had a little spot right here, just a little scab that we just scraped. So there's a little, a little scab release, but. What what does this do? So what does this do? This is helping. We're gonna see what the wrist does after this. Feel that spot right there. Mm -hmm. You got a spot right here. Mm -hmm. Is that scar tissue? Scar tissue. Tenosynovitis. Google that. Teno, T E N O, Sino, S Y N O, Vitus. Tenosynovitis. Okay. Inflammation of the synovium. The synovium is like your, if you ever cooked a steak and you see all the white marble, right. the fat, and the connective tissue that holds the muscle onto the, the ribeye or whatever. Right. That's your fascia, it's your connective tissue. And connective tissue, it just gets all balled up, knotted up like your hair does. And you got to comb your hair twice a day. And yeah, definitely have to stretch your arms and muscles once or twice a day. And you've got to keep blood down here. So we got a little release in the right wrist. See those little things called patachiae. Patachiae are little broken blood vessels. We had a little more on the first appointment, but already we have healthier blood flow into the arm. So we'll see what the wrist feels like after we sit up and see if we can activate that right shoulder blade a little bit. You want me up? Nope, stay right there okay. for a second. Whoops. And I must have came there. Yeah. Because we're trying to learn and we're trying to learn. And I started doing it. You're like really old. Sometimes it's like, yeah, she's a little slow. Oh, okay. Okay. No, we're not even going to hit the carpal tunnel today. Now, is there any risk in doing this? Risk. risk. Bruising. Okay. Bruising. That's your biggest risk. Okay. Uh, soft, uh, soft tissue skin discoloration, like what you, you feel this right here? Yep. It's a little sore, right? Right. Maybe a little sore up here. So we didn't do this left arm the first day, right? Right. But we have, so we're getting a reaction just like we're going to keep at this a little bit more. So breaking down breaking all that down, stuff Breaking down, pulling on the knots. Oh okay. gosh, is my hair all tangled up? Okay. You should have seen my daughter's. Did you hear that story? No. My wife was out of town this week. So I was on dad duty and she's in this dress, Disney. She's like, she saw yes. it, right? Dad, I want to wear a dress. I woke her up on Tuesday. We have an hour to get ready for preschool. Dad, as soon as she wakes up, I want to wear a dress. I'm like, we don't have time, honey. We got to have dinner or lunch or uh, breakfast and get ready for school. I want to wear a dress. She's three and a half, Taylor is. And she, and she rules the house. Oh, she rules dad. <laughs> Mom, get over here, girl. I'll give you a ponytail, you know? Dad. I I'm, want braids. I'm like, <laughs> relax your hand. Nice. 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 Thumb? Uh, Not there yet. I'm not there yet. Uh, so, yeah, she went to school with a raggedy ponytail on Tuesday. I oh, sent my wife a picture of us. My wife says, <laughs> What did you, did you even touch her hair or did she wake up like that? Wonderful. Okay. Hands press. Soft shoulders open. Light neck adjustment. Easy one, easy one, easy one today. Relax your left, yes, right there, twist. And one more on the right side. Turn to the... One more here. Now we got it. See, now you're stiff here. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not her favorite yet, but we got it more today. <laughs> All right. Oh, you made it. We made it together. We made it together. Sit up gently for me. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> so, to recap today, now let's see if we can bend up here, relax here. We'll get that to go, the shoulder. 
as they loosen up one more time here. Relax this right arm. Palm this way, relax your elbow too. Nope, not yet, that's okay. <laughs> so we gotta get the shoulders more posterior, more back chain. More back chain means more muscle activation. Set the wrists down, the knuckles down. Whole way down. Straighten elbows up tall. Totally different. See how that feels easier now? Mm -hmm. Now here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna sit here. See how straight this is, Le way less bent. No surgery. Crazy. <laughs> Lean your head to the left. Uh, look straight, but tilt your left ear to left shoulder. You're gonna work on this at home. You're gonna focus on the length through here, down through here, with a soft straight right elbow, with a soft shoulder back, with a breathe in, and a breath out and a head pulled to the left. Do you feel how tight you're? You feel how tight? What's yeah. that? What's fine? That's a lot to remember. Watch your video in a couple of weeks, okay? okay? And now lean your head to the right. Tilt your head to the right. Yes. See how much easier there? Mm -hmm. Now tilt your head to the left. Oh, feel how tight that side is? So you're going to watch TV at home and you're going to sit there and you're going to think, let me match these up a little bit more. Let me push this down a little bit. Let me roll these open. Let me tilt my head to the left, breathing in, exhaling, rolling to the left like that. Nice. You can twist or you can twist. Okay. Tilt your head to your left ear, left ear, left ear. Left down. ear. There you go. Other left. See how you got to work on that? Yeah. Verse compared to this side. Lean your head to the right now. Oh, so much easier. See how much easier? Mm -hmm. You'll still feel the pull up here a little bit. We did get our neck adjusted. That clears out the tension. Now let's go to center. Let's go chin to chest. And it's good to just bow down a little bit. And roll back a little bit. And now just think, just be grateful and say thank you to whoever it is that you pray to or whatever. Breathe in, breathe out, chin down. Focus on left shoulder. A minute or, two, or 30 seconds, 30, 60, 90. Chin to chest, don't turn the head. So we gotta break that movement pattern of her turning her head into her right shoulder. And we gotta think, can I lower this and pull this over? Does that make sense? Do you feel how that pulls down here? Uh, I didn't actually feel that. Okay, now I do. Now you do with a little bit of, see how that's so tight up here? Mm -hmm. So if you choose to one of your appointments wear a uh, spaghetti strap, we're gonna scrape your neck out a little bit, okay. just like we did with your wrist. Okay. But let's take a look at the wrist. See how much flatter her wrist is now on the right? All right, take a break. So we did on her first appointment, we already scraped this and remember we had that same reaction. Yes. So we didn't treat the extensor compartment on the left on her first appointment, which was last week. We treated this. The right side broke out just like the left side did, but this side's already healthier. It's yeah. already got a little more right. blood. So we broke blood vessels open. The cool thing about the body, it's all healing all the time as long as you get it the right nutrition, water, fertilization, all that good stuff, movement. This is gonna bruise a little bit for the next two or three days, but then it's gonna be lightly easier as you do your knuckle stretches as well as your palms down and back. Okay. Cool. Okay. Feel okay? Okay. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you.